came to Cambridge as a scholar of Peterhouse in 1940. And because of the war, I was only allowed two years before I went in the army. And so I took the first course and completed the part two of the mathematical tripos in 1942. And then I was in the I'll be initially working on radar in the Cambridge area and then I moved over to looking after wireless sets across the UK and then after the uh, uh, Second Front invasion of the, of the whole of, of um, France and Germany uh, I was uh, posted to the Airborne Forces where I was in charge of the maintenance of wireless sets throughout the uh, our first Airborne Division, 6th Airborne Division, the Polish Parachute Brigade, and I had a small team that worked with me. By that time I was a captain in the army, and we, we worked during the, the period up to the end of the war, either in London or in, uh, in Lincoln or on Shulsby Plain. And it was in Lincoln that I met my wife, um, and we married after the war when I was a fellow of Clare. Uh, but at that time there was a lot of competition to get research, to get lectureships. The two people who were elected to lectureships before me both subsequently got Nobel Prizes, so the competition was fierce. And uh, they, I was advised that it would be sensible to get experience outside Cambridge. And so I went to Princeton and stayed, we stayed in America for two years, during which time my research prospered. And so after returning to the UK and briefly spending a year in Manchester, we came back to Cambridge, uh, where Clare College uh, uh, re-elected me as a fellow and director of studies in mathematics. That continued until 1964, when the college started thinking about better accommodation for graduate students and I was uh, an advisor on the conversation during that period because I was uh, busy moving from the mathematics part to the physics department and starting a new uh, teaching program in the physics department for theoretical physics. So it wasn't until uh, January, uh, the beginning of January 1960 that I read the details of the paper the master had circulated saying we must come to a decision about this we've been talking about it for a year and when I looked at it I thought uh, none of the proposals were what I would like and so I wrote a proposal that we found a centre for advanced study and that was uh, after I returned to Cambridge it was typed by my secretary and I took it to the uh, to the, the um, Master of Clare, and he waylaid me before lunch and said, this is it, come in, we must talk about it. And the following Monday, we had a meeting of the governing body, and all the other agenda was, was dropped, and we just talked about the founding of Clare Hall, and it was agreed in one meeting that that's what we would do. And the Master and the tutor and myself were then appointed to work out uh, details, and uh, most of, the deep, most of the structure was already in my proposal, so the details were really a matter of, of deciding how we would elect the new fellows that evolved um, uh, during 1964, uh, 65, and we found that the college officially with approval from the university in January 1966. And this was a very different type of institution or college compared to yes. what was then in, in Cambridge, wasn't it? At the time we started, it was uh, intended to be a centre for visiting faculty with research fellows, and of course we needed uh, permanent fellows to, uh, uh, to manage the college. And so for the permanent fellows, we uh, elected uh, five people who were not yet fellows of any college uh, as their founding fellows. And they, <coughs> so they uh, moved in and basically adapted to the programme that I had already written about how we would evolve. And uh, we, uh, 
and decided on what we would need by way of rooms and accommodation. And fortunately at that time the uh, university was developing in different parts of Cambridge and this led to the opportunity to build Clare Hall on the site we are now on mm. and uh, that uh, took place during 1966-67. And what you had proposed, which I guess was inspired from your visit and stay at Princeton, was that visiting academics could come well, and bring their families. I think the, uh, the great thing about Princeton was that when I made the proposal for Clare Hall, I called it an institute. I called it an institute for advanced study, Clare Institute for advanced study. And it was only uh, that we felt this was inappropriate to Cambridge, we decided to call it, uh, 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 give it another name. And it was actually the, uh, the senior fellow of the college who said, why don't we go back to the old name of Clare College? Uh, and called it Clare Hall. Yeah. Uh, Clare Hall had changed its name to Clare College about 50 years earlier. And so Clare Hall was available as a name. And that's how we chose the name. It was decided uh, really in five minutes at the governing body meeting. Everybody thought it was a good idea. And your suggestion of having accommodation for visiting academics to yeah. bring the families, yeah. that was very new to, college, to Cambridge as well, wasn't it? Uh, that was that was new when I proposed it, but but uh, during the time we were discussing these things, um, uh, Churchill College developed accommodation for visitors, and the first visiting fellow of Clare Hall actually had accommodation in Churchill College, and uh, uh, but he was uh, uh, spending time in Clare in Clare College. We were Clare Hall was in Clare College at that time. And so he came that time. He was a very distinguished um, uh, uh, professor from Princeton who had played a major part in the development of atomic energy during the war. How, uh, did, you, how did you go about publicising or making Clare Hall known as a new college and as a new college for receiving uh, visiting oh, academics? The, uh, uh, it spread around the academic world. Uh, through our visitors. Our first visitors were uh, from uh, UK, from America and, and from Canada because those were the places we already had contacts with. But then uh, we elected Carmen Blacker as one of the first fellows and uh, our partner Michael Lowy um, also came into the college and they both had contacts in, in Japan and China and that led to us getting uh, visitors from there. I had separately got uh, uh, contacts with India and with uh, uh, Singapore, uh, so we had visitors from that part of the world. And soon afterwards, I, I developed contacts with the Middle East, and so we had people coming from Israel as well. Uh, and at that time, my research was um, become uh, international with uh, energy studies, which was important in all parts of the world. So. I was visiting a lot of places and would tell them about Clare Hall. And so quite rapidly we were getting visiting academics coming, applying to come from all parts of the world. Mm. Russia was a bit late because they still had a dictatorship there. Yeah, but then they started coming mm. after a while, not with great frequency and we still have rather few contacts with Russia. And quite soon, uh, you also started building a new building for the college. The decision to uh, make the building for the college was taken uh, almost as soon as we had uh, decided to go ahead. And we um, appointed an architect who we actually asked for, um, uh, made inquiries about five different architects, but the one that we chose it was, as it happened, the one who had been the primary architect in Wedding Garden City where I had lived as a child and he then moved to Sweden and had developed uh, uh, architectural uh, work in Sweden and also in France. Uh, so he was, he was an international architect and we appointed him. He came here 
to talk about it. And he said, you must tell me how the college is going to work, because that will decide how I do the buildings. And the result of that was the, um, uh, the uh, communal area discussion area, the, the meeting rooms, and the associated apartments for visiting fellows. And then we were so successful that uh, after a time we were running out of space for visiting fellows. And then we were very fortunate because the um, uh, Rothschild family had uh, been initially in uh, a college which they rented from St. John's, but they were turned out of that college by St. John's because they wanted it for students. And, the, uh, and they bought some land at the end of Herschel Road and built a house there. And <clears throat> as it, fortunately, <clears throat> one of the fellows was a contemporary of Rothschild during the uh, pre-war period mm -hmm. and knew him well. And so he, first of all, uh, rocked me into contact with Rothschild. And then uh, we, uh, I helped Rothschild with some work that he was doing for television. So we, we had a contact with the family and then afterwards when uh, Lord Rothschild died, the family daughter had married a mathematician who had been one of my former students and later became Master of Trinity. And he uh, was the person who uh, essentially spoke with the Rothschild family saying it would be very good to let Clare Hall have West Court what we now call West Court. And so that was how the uh, uh, arrangement was made. There were two connections. There was the um, uh, senior fellow, uh, Dick David, who was uh, a contemporary of Rothschild, and my connection uh, with uh, the uh, person who was the uh, son-in-law of the Rothschild family, and really the decision maker on Cambridge uh, developments. So we found ourselves with the uh, uh, Rothschild family house at the end of Hersher Road and we built additional rooms and the first use of the uh, meeting room there in West Court was for the reception for the uh, wedding of my son I think it was <laughs> we got married at a convenient time and now that the college is celebrating its 50th anniversary next year how do you feel about the college now? Are you um, surprised it's still here 50 years on? Do you think a lot of things have changed? No, it's, uh, uh, Clare Hall has retained much of its character. I think the biggest change from the early period is that the graduate students have become a more substantial part of the college. And this, I think, was uh, inevitable and it is beneficial to the college for the long run. Uh, but the uh, uh, the, the fellowship still remains the same and the uh, integration with uh, fellows and the um, management staff uh, continues really very well so that I think uh, it's meeting the kind of objectives which we have originally but also adapting to the changing circumstances where uh, we've taken more graduate students than I think we would initially have wanted. Um, but it has formed a new and important part of the college. The 50th anniversary is uh, certainly a, a, a time to reflect and look back and ask about uh, how the college will evolve. And the present uh, pattern uh, appears to be something which will be stable and valuable for a long time to come. The mix of uh, research fellows, um, permanent fellows who do the management of the college, and the uh, visiting fellows from now from all parts of the world uh, has proved to be an extremely good combination and a, a very valuable part of the program is the returning life members who know the environment and they have friends in Cambridge and they come back uh, sometimes staying in college and sometimes staying in the town and so the life members are an extraordinarily valuable uh, uh, community and they're also uh, valuable in helping to raise money because of their individual con contributions they do have uh, connections, some of them uh, with the 
the new wealthy in different parts of the world which provide additional uh, financial support for the college. When you look to the past 50 years, I hope no more has changed. Uh, um, one wonders about the next 50 years. Um, the, uh, I, I have a great grandson who is likely to come to Cambridge uh, in a few years' time. He's extremely bright. And uh, I must uh, tell him that when he gets to an appropriate age, he must move to Clare Hall <laughs> and essentially do further developments there. Anything else that's come up in your mind? I, that's I what you're talking about. Uh, I have already uh, spoken about the importance that my wife Elsie had in the development of the college, but uh, she was uh, also um, uh, interacted with uh, people in the town, and in particular she was the uh, chair of the um, uh, Flower Arranging Club, which was a uh, Cambridge County uh, uh, wide organisation, and they met initially in Clare Hall. Uh, until the numbers became too great for our meeting room and had to move to a larger room in Newnham and then later to an even bigger room in, uh, uh, in one of the villages. So uh, she uh, uh, arranged flowers on the college every Wednesday dinner when we were in Cambridge and they continued uh, for a long time. I think the habit has now departed but they did continue for many years. Uh, for Wednesday dinners, and then they would stay in, stay in the college hall. Did you ever live in college with, with Elsie? We lived in college for six months uh, when the uh, president was away, and I was acting president. And we, we came there. As it happened, I was, uh, at that time, I was a non-executive director of the Eastern Electricity Company, and so we um, invited the chairman of the company and uh, and his wife to come to Clare Hall on that occasion. And they did uh, provide, later did to provide some research money for Cambridge from Eastern Electricity, which was helpful. But eventually they, uh, uh, their son moved to Oxford and they, they transferred their allegiances to Oxford. <laughs>